guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Kirsten and it's time for the October TBR. For those of you interested in my TBR game and how it all works, you can check out my previous TBR videos on all the ins and outs and how it actually works. But basically it boils down to I have to roll a six coloured sided dice and each colour that comes up more than once I have to do a re-roll. So I have a minimum of six books but it can quickly get out of hand. Before we get into the rolls though, I do have to take a punishment because I did not finish my September TBR. As of the day I'm filming this, I still have a week to go, but I have four books that I still need to read and I know I'm not going to get to all of them, so punishment time it is. Now I am doing my punishments a little bit differently this time. In here I have different books that I've been wanting to get to at some point but I keep putting them off or I'm just not in the mood for them quite yet. So as a punishment I have to read whatever book I choose and I have to read it first in the month. Let's choose our punishment. Which is Angel Mage. So the first book I have to read for the month is Angel Mage by Garth Nix. This is a Lilith retelling which Honestly, that's enough to get me hooked because I love retellings, I love the story of Lilith, but for some reason I just haven't got around to picking this up. So this is now first on my TBR for October. Honestly, not bad considering it's going to be a nice spooky read, I think. But let's get to roll number one. Roll number one. Yellow. Manga slash graphic novel. Roll number one ended up being manga slash graphic novel and keeping with the October spooky theme I am going with Monstrous Volume 2. This is a horror graphic novel, one that I really really enjoyed the first one. It is quite graphic in places with bodily horror but it's one that I really did enjoy. It's really hooked me into graphic novels and I'm more interested in picking up different types of graphic novels now. Our main character basically has a demon trapped within her and she's trying to understand why and they're also trying to escape this group of humans called witch nuns which basically try and get hold of these half-breeds to torture them and use them for power. It's an interesting book, it's very horrific, it is quite a horrible world that they live in but it is gripping and this little side character made me laugh so many times throughout the book plus the artwork is just stunning. Roll number two, green, dark cover. And the second prompt is to read a book with a dark cover and for this I've actually gone for a classic and that's The Curious Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a classic book that I've recently picked up. I got it in a charity shop for a pound and I genuinely do like to pick up a classic around Halloween time, especially some of the classic horrors where most of our horror stories have come from. I find them fascinating to see where they all originated from. I was toying between this and Frankenstein, but Frankenstein is a reread and I really am interested to see the original story behind Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde considering it's had so many adaptations since then. Roll number three, purple. Representation. We're doing pretty well so far. My third prompt is a book with representation. Now I've left that prompt very open to interpretation on purpose. This could be LBQTIA representation, it could be a person of colour that's wrote the book or a person of colour main author, it could be representation of a country that I don't currently live in, it could be a multitude of different things and so for this month I've decided to go with Asian representation and go with Soul of the Sword by Julie Kagawa. This is the second book in a trilogy. I read A Shadow of the Fox a few months ago and absolutely loved it. It's full of Japanese mythology. We're following two main characters. One is our cage samurai and one is Yumeko who is a kitsune, a trickster fox and they are both trying to get hold of pieces of the dragon scroll. Well the cage samurai is Yumeko has tricked him into accompanying her for her to actually put the dragon scroll in a safe place without him realising. I really enjoyed this book, I like Yumeko as our character, she's very feisty and funny and then we have our brooding samurai warrior and we pick up a few different others that make this merry little band that go along this quest and I really enjoyed it. I can't believe it's taken me so long to actually pick up this book again because I was completely immersed within the world and just, just loved it. Roll number four, purple again, under 500 pages. My first re-roll, 
green. Oh gosh. Contemporary. And another re-roll. Blue. New to me author. Roll number four, we got our first two re-rolls, so I ended up with three prompts for this. And the first one is read a book under 500 pages. For this, I'm actually going to be buying a book. Very happy to though, it's a book that I've been really looking forward to getting, and that's Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shauna Maguire. This is the third book in the Wayward Children series, and I love this series. This is a series of books that follow different characters within this world, where we're basically following children, like Alice who went to Wonderland, like the children that went to the land of Narnia. They go to these different worlds and then we're watching them as they have to come back home because those worlds, while they might have been cruel and dangerous, is where they felt most at home. I love these books, they are short stories. I think they're brilliantly well done. They're always trying to get a point across as well. So for example, Down Among the Sticks and Bones, we're talking a lot about the importance of how you raise a child and how that can influence them in their later years. There's just so much that I love about these books. So when I saw that prompt come up, although I have many books that are under 500 pages, I just couldn't help myself. Then for my first re-roll, we had Contemporary. And for this, I'm going with Meat Market by Juno Dawson. This is a contemporary. I really like Juno Dawson's work. I've only read one of hers and that's Wonderland. That was a really interesting retelling of Alice in Wonderland and it was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. And Meat Market has had some quite good reviews as well for being one that's full of representation and dealing with a very difficult subject. In this book, we're following the model industry and all the ins and outs of it, I believe. I don't know too much about it because I do feel like, especially with contemporary books, it kind of gives away too much of what's gonna happen in it. But I'm excited to read it and I think it's gonna be quite an impactful read, or at least that's what I'm hoping for. And then the final prompt for role number four is to read a new to me author. And for this, I had two choices. I was either gonna go with Malice or The Poppy Wall. Both of these books are by authors that are completely new to me and they're both books that my sister absolutely loves. So I made her choose for me and she decided Malice by John Gwynn. This is a series, an adult fantasy series. I'm not sure if it's stopping at four books. I know there's currently four books. I don't know if there's going to be more, but it's a series my sister loves to the point where she can happily finish one of these big books in a day, which that's impressive for anyone, and especially my sister who takes forever to read a book. But it's one that she loved and I don't need to know much more than that to find out what all the fuss is about and to see whether I'm going to enjoy it as well. She has warned me that the start of this book is a wee bit slow because we're setting up the world but then it really picks up from there and it's a series that she just loves and we're in the midst of a massive war between giants and humans and it just sounds very good to me. It's a bit of a chunky one but I trust her. Roll number five. Orange. Reader first in a series. Thankfully, roll number five was very good to me and I got a simple prompt of reader first in a series. That suited me very well because it meant I could pick up Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is a book I got recently and it's one that I really wanted to fit into my October TBR because it's got dark academia vibes as well as a murder mystery element that's going on and I'm just excited. I quite like YA murder mystery. This is a new genre that I've recently got into because of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So I'm expecting something along those lines, but more dark academia vibes, which A Good Girl's Guide to Murder didn't have. So I don't know what this book's about. I don't know how it's gonna go. I just know it's the start of a trilogy and it's one I've had my eye on for a while. And because of the darker vibes to it, it's gonna be a perfect read for October. Roll number six, green. Continue a series. Another re-roll. Purple, recent purchase, hopefully the last roll, yellow, horror slash thriller slash murder mystery, and another re-roll, pink, retelling. And as always, roll number six screwed me over and I ended up with four books for this one last roll but I am very happy with all of the books so far. And the first one is to continue a series, which we all knew it was gonna be The Damned by Renee Adier. I loved The Beautiful, I read it in September, absolutely loved it. It's a brand new favorite of mine, five star read, and I just cannot wait to get back into this world. We are in a New Orleans setting within the French Quarter, so there's a lot of French influences, which I genuinely really loved. I felt it really added to the atmosphere of this book. Our main character, Celine, has 
just come over to New Orleans after escaping her past in Paris and joins a nunnery but of course gets pulled into deeper and darker things and I love it. There's vampires in it, there is a brilliant atmospheric setting, there's a bit of a murder mystery that's going on and the ending of that book just... Uh, I just need to know what happens, I need to know that my characters are okay and it's just... So yeah, I'm very pleased. This was going to be fitted onto my TBR regardless of what prompts came up. I was just kind of waiting to see and I'm pleased, man. I am so excited to read this. I'm just kind of bummed that this isn't my first read in October because I have to read my punishment one instead, but I know I'm going to love it when I get to it. The second prompt for roll number six is a recent purchase and this works out perfectly because I literally just ordered a Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the second book in the series after From Blood and Ash and again that's a book that I read in September. Absolutely loved another five star read. Again we have vampires. There's a bit of a vampire war going on and we're following our main character Poppy who is classed as a maiden except she is treated pretty poorly for one that's meant to be so special to these people. I'm just excited to read it. I can't wait for it to carry on. It's another one where it ended and I just desperately need to know what's going to happen next because because it ended so well and there's so much that needs to be explained so I cannot wait to read that one as well. Again that was one that was gonna fit on this TBR at some point somehow so I'm pleased I actually managed to get it onto some of the prompts. The third prompt for role number six was to read a thriller or horror or murder mystery, kind of vague, kind of up to me what I want to as long as it's a wee bit spooky in some way and for this I'm going to finally pick up Good Girls Die First by Catherine Foxfield. This is a book I pre-ordered and I still haven't read it. I don't know much about it, I think it's more of a th YA thriller. We are following this group of school kids who end up at this abandoned carnival and then weird stuff starts happening. I've heard some mixed reviews on it that some saying that Catherine tried to do too much within the book but you know what? It sounds spooky and abandoned carnival. It just... why not give it a read? Again, this is one I was hoping to get onto my October TBR because of the fact that it is meant to be that slightly more spooky and I did need to finally get around to reading this. And my final prompt for role number six is a retelling. For this one, I am going to pick up Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. This was on my September TBR. It was for both prompts of Bookoplathon and my TBR game. But I'm just not going to get to this. I'm not feeling in the mood to read it right now. But seeing as retelling came up yet again and it is a Les Miserables retelling, I really, really do need to just get this one read. I don't know why I'm putting it off because I know that I will probably enjoy this. I enjoy Les Miserables normally. I know a lot of people are saying it's not a true retelling but I don't mind authors putting their own spin on a classic. I think it's a good idea to do that. And we're following our main character. Her sister tells her to join the Guild of Thieves to protect herself because her father is forcing her elder sister into the House of Flesh which she does not want for her younger sister. But her younger sister vows that she will get her out and we're kind of following it from there. It seems like an interesting one. We've got this French setting which I really enjoyed in The Beautiful so I'm hoping it's just as well done here and it's kind of the seedy underside to it with all these different guilds of thieves, assassins, house of flesh etc. So I'm hoping it's a good atmospheric read but I have heard some conflicting reviews which is why I've been putting it off throughout September but I'm going to do it. I'm going to read it in October. So this is my October TBR plus two books that I'm still awaiting to arrive. A total of 11 books. That's a bit more feasible than the 14 I set myself for September considering that honestly I didn't even finish that. These 11 however some of them are ones that I'm really really excited to read and they should be pretty manageable especially as I've got a couple of shorter reads in here. I'm not taking part in any readathons so far for the month of October. If they come up I will do separate videos for those and try and match it to the books that I've got chosen here. Do let me know what your reads are going to be in October and if you're taking part in any readathons again let me know I'd love to check those out. But for now if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. All my social media links to my Instagram, Goodreads and Twitter will be linked below and I'll catch you in the next one.